More leaks about the RTX 3080 just appeared online and it's looking to be a really fast graphics card. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. All right, so this information comes from the website videocards.com and I'm gonna go ahead and read a short excerpt from the article that they posted about this leak and then we're gonna discuss what this really means. So on the article, they start by saying, quote, it has been discovered that the latest GeForce RTX 30 series graphics cards have been added to the most recent INF driver file. They then go on to say, quote, the latest entry lists device ID of 2206, which is codenamed NVIDIA Graphics Device. This is how NVIDIA lists their upcoming graphics cards before they are officially named. The ID has been confirmed by T4C Fantasy, the maintainer of Tech Power Up GPU database, and at Rogame to be the GeForce RTX 3080 graphics card. And the source that video cards lists here, who apparently was the first one to find this, is Laptop Video To Go. Finally, they say, quote, the same 2206 ID has been found by at Rogame on the user benchmark website. It showcases a device with 10 gigabytes of memory clocked at 4,750 megahertz. That's an effective clock speed of 19 gigabits per second. The core clock has been reported at a maximum limit of 2.1 gigahertz. So if we go over to Rogue Games' original post here, we can see there's actually a full screenshot of the benchmark. There are some interesting things that we should talk about here. Now, while it does show that the NVIDIA graphics device is running at 2.1 gigahertz and has 19 gigabits per second memory, 10 gigabytes of it, in fact, just like was reported by video cards, we can also see that for some bizarre reason, it's scoring relatively low. Now, I'm not entirely sure why it's scoring so low, and it could be a number of factors. It could just be that the final drivers aren't ready. It could be that the clock speeds were running really low for some reason. There's just a whole bunch of different reasons as to why this could occur. So it's interesting to see this benchmark from a perspective of it gives us the specs of this possible card. However, I wouldn't look at this benchmark as an indicator for how much performance this card is actually going to have. Now, after looking through this article, there's one piece of information that sticks out to me as being the most important, and that's what we learned about the memory subsystem of the RTX 3080. And if this is real, the memory bandwidth on the RTX 3080 is going to be insanely high. Now, to put it in perspective, let's go ahead and take the 10 gigabytes of VRAM on the RTX 3080, and it will most likely be on a 320-bit bus, so we'll take 320-bit bus times 19 gigabits per second memory, and we divide that by 8,000, which gives us 760 gigabytes per second, which already sounds like a lot, but you don't realize just how much that is until you compare it to the bandwidth on the RTX 2080, the card that the 3080 will be replacing. And so if we do that, and we look at the 2080, which has 448 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, and we take 760 divided by 448, well, that gives us a memory bandwidth that is 69.64% higher on the RTX 3080, if all of this is correct. And that is a massive leap in one generation. And, you know, honestly, you know what that tells me is that in theory, the RTX 3080 could have a GPU core that could be up to nearly 70% faster than the RTX 2080 that's replacing. Now, is that actually going to happen? Probably not, but it is actually possible. Now, if we go ahead and compare the 760 gigabytes per second on the 3080 to the 2080 Ti, which gets 616 gigabytes per second, well, then we get an increase of 23.3% in terms of bandwidth over the 2080 Ti. And so if we take into account the fact that the 2080 Ti has nearly 38% higher bandwidth than the 2080, but it's only 30% faster, and I say only even though that's quite a bit, than the 2080 in 4K according to Hardware Unbox's numbers, I think we can glean that, yes, the 3080 is going to be significantly faster than the 2080 and even the 2080 Ti, but it's not going to scale directly with how much more bandwidth it's getting. So that brings me to performance. And if we take into account the fact that the 3080 is likely going to have roughly 70% higher bandwidth than the 2080 that it's replacing, and it's going to have a 2.1 gigahertz peak clock, which, you know, if you look at a 2080, it seems to tap out at around 2 gigahertz stock. Uh, for a peak clock, 
and then we take into account that it's going to have likely an IPC gain as well as many more cores than the RTX 2080. Well, then I think in terms of performance, when we compare the 3080 to the 2080, I'm guessing we'll get around 45 to 55 percent more performance. Now, we don't know for sure, and this is just my best educated guess on it. But after seeing all these various leaks, I'm pretty confident that that's roughly where it's going to lie. Now, if we compare the 3080 to the 2080 Ti, I believe here we'll get roughly between 15 to 20 percent higher performance. And honestly, that's a little bit higher than I was originally expecting. I believe a while ago I said that I expected the 2080 to be I be somewhere between 10 to 15 or 10 to 20 percent faster. So being, you know, closer to 20 percent faster than the 2080 Ti is really impressive. And this looks like it's going to be a really fast generation of cards. Now, the only thing we don't know is price. And I'm hoping this RTX 3080 does end up landing, you know, under seven hundred dollars. But who knows? You know, I'd like to get back to the days where we get, you know, $500 80 class cards, but I just don't think that's going to happen unless AMD really brings it with their cards. So let's all hope that AMD gets their cards out and gets them fast so that we can actually afford these levels of performance. But in any case, that's just what I think. What do you think about these leaks about the RTX 3080? Are they real? And if so, are you impressed or are you disappointed? I'd love to know what you think in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.